Are you a GarageBand user who wants to import an audio file into your GarageBand project or perhaps collaborate with another GarageBand user or even just import an instrumental file into your GarageBand to sing over the top of? Well, if you fall into any of those categories, this video is going to be for you. I'm going to show you how I can take an audio file emailed to me by another user, import it into GarageBand and then add an audio track. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And as I mentioned in this video, we're going to be doing something pretty cool. We're going to take an M4A compressed audio file sent to me via email from another user. I'm going to bring that over into GarageBand and then I'm going to record some vocals and then send it on back for him to mix it back in to the original GarageBand project. So let's dive in and take a look now. So here I am in my Gmail app, but you can do this from the regular mail app or pretty much anywhere else that's going to allow you to view an attachment. And as you can see, I have an attachment here, which is an audio file of Can't Help Falling In Love, which is an instrumental that I'm going to add a vocal track to. Now this was sent to me by my friend Mark Bether, who is an amazing bass player and musician out of Poland. And he has sent this to me so that I can record some vocals and he's already arranged the rest of the track. So it's here in an M4A file, a compressed file. I'm gonna tap on that. It's going to open up and start playing, which isn't exactly what we want because we want to actually get this to GarageBand. So let's tap in the top right here on the send button and that is going to bring up our send options. We can't go straight to GarageBand, we need to go and put this in files first. So down the bottom left here we're going to tap save to files and then where I like to save things like this is right here, the GarageBand file transfer. So you could put it onto iCloud Drive and you could put it to any folder you like there, but I'm going to put it in the GarageBand file transfer folder, which I'll show you why in just a moment. Let's tap add. And there you go, that sent that across and now that's saved on my device. So what I'm gonna do now is let's switch back to GarageBand and I'll show you how we can import this audio file. Okay, so here we are in GarageBand. We're gonna tap on Create Document to create a new song. Now we'll just tap the audio recorder just to open up a track here. We don't really need anything here, but let's go to the track view. And here we are in our track view. Now the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is set my BPM. You might've noticed in the file there that Mark had very helpfully put that this is 137 BPM. So I'm gonna tap on my settings option here. I'm gonna tap the tempo and we're gonna raise this one up to 137 BPM. There we go. The other thing we need to make sure is that we have our uh, length on automatic. So we'll just tap our plus button there we go, eight bars automatic. So that means it's going to be able to put the whole track into our project here. Now you'll notice that our little loop icon in the top right here has a little one next to it. Now, I told you that there was a reason why I put it into the GarageBand file transfer folder, and that is because this audio files tab at the top here is directly linked to that GarageBand file transfer folder. Otherwise, we would need to go to the browse items from the files app and import it in, which is no problem, but it's just one additional step. So what we're gonna do now is tap and hold, and now we're going to drag this over. I'm going to drag it onto a second track because this is going to make sure that our audio track doesn't have any processing on it because this one here would have had one of our default vocal processing, but we want this to be on a clean track. And now, if everything's been done correctly, let's hit play and listen to the intro of this song. There we go, and you can hear that I had the metronome on there and it has lined it up perfectly so that it is right in line. That's why it's important to get the tempo right there. Now, if I knew the key signature of the song too, I could go in and I could update the key signature here. And obviously it's in 4-4 time. Well, not obviously, but it is in 4-4 time, this particular song. So I'm now ready to go. And what I can in fact do is use this original audio track now and hit record and I can record my vocals over the top of this track. Now, when I'm done with that, I'm not gonna do that in this video, but uh, maybe in a future video if, if uh, folks wanna see that, You've seen me record audio before and I'll link to videos where I record of audio and do that here. But let's just assume that I have now finished with this and I'm gonna tap and go back to my songs. And now let's just rename this just so that we know what this is. And we'll just go, we'll call it love because love is good. And now we can just do our sharing options here so we can tap it and then we can send this back using the same way. So tapping on our share and we can share either the song or the project. And I've got a heap of videos about sharing, so I won't do that in this video here, but I'll link to those above and below as well. So you'll notice that this was just a, a compressed file 
and I'm just going to record the audio and send it back. And I'm going to, so the other thing, sorry, that I'll probably show you is that when I send it back, I'll mute the original audio and I'll just share this as my vocal track. That way, Mark can actually pull my vocals back into the original track and do the mixing there. There's other ways to share an entire project in GarageBand, which I've shown in other videos. And once again, I will link to how to do that if you actually want to collaborate on the project. But in this case, I'm just adding vocals to an arrangement that someone else has already done. I can just record my vocals, send just the vocals back, and then he can use this exact same process to import those back into his track. The other thing I'll mention here is you'll notice that he sent me the track as an M4A file, uh, which is gonna be a compressed audio file. When I send back the vocals, if I want them to be full quality, I'll send those as a WAV file, and that way he can import those back in full quality, and we're gonna get the best quality sound. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So there you go. You can see here that this has a lot of powerful options. If you've got an instrumental track that you've got in your files app or that someone sends you, you can bring that in here. If you wanna do some karaoke tracks here in GarageBand, you can do that. The sky is the limit, but I think that this is a pretty cool way to get a file into GarageBand. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below, and I'll see you on the next video. Once again, a big thanks to Mark Beether for helping me out on this video, and also thanks to Dan Fleming, who provided some of the original instrumentation on this song. If you'd like to check out both of these folks' music, I'll have some links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.